Today is October 30th. Today, we see the cost of the kingdom. Today, as you read through the Bible in a year, please read Luke chapters 13 to 15. Now, in this section, um, <clears throat> you would think, since Jesus is trying to recruit followers of his new kingdom, he'd tell them all of the wonderful things about it. He doesn't. Instead, he tells them how hard it's going to be. Um, 13, 1 to 5, he says, you've got to repent of your sins. 1322 to 30, he says, very few will follow. The door is very narrow. 1322 to uh, 14, 7 to 14, he says, following will not bring you honor. It will bring you humility. 1415 to 24, he says, you'll be surprised at the guests who show up in the kingdom of God. Then in 1425 to 35, he says, if you're going to follow, you have to count the cost. Nevertheless, he does say in passages like 1318 to 20, the kingdom grows. It's like a mustard seed, a tiny seed that grows into a large shrub. Or it's like yeast, a little bit of least, least yeast that you put in the bread will leaven the whole lump. So the kingdom does grow. He finishes in chapter 15 by saying, if you understand this and you still follow, the lost is found. Enjoy today as you read Luke 13 to 15. About that time, Jesus was informed that Pilate had murdered some people from Galilee as they were offering sacrifices at the temple. Do you think those Galileans were worse sinners than all the other people from Galilee? Jesus asked. Is that why they suffered? Not at all. And you will perish too unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And what about the 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Were they the worst sinners in Jerusalem? No, and I tell you again, that unless you repent, you will perish too. Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it, but he was always disappointed. Finally he said to his gardener, I've waited three years, and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down, it's just taking space in the garden. The gardener answered, Sir, give it one more chance. Leave it yet another year, and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for eighteen years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her, and she instantly could stand straight. How she praised God. But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath day. There are six days of the week for working, he said to the crowd. Come on those days and be healed, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord replied, You hypocrites, each of you works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox or your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? This shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things he did. Then Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? How can I illustrate it? It is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make nest in its branches. He also asked, What else is the kingdom of God like? It is like a yeast a woman uses in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. 
Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he went, always pressing on towards Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? He replied, Work hard to enter the narrow door of God's kingdom, for many will try to enter but will fail. When the master of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. You will stand outside knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, But we ate and drank with you, and you taught us in the streets. And he will reply, I tell you, I don't know you or where you come from. Get away from me, all you who do evil. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for you will see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. But you will be thrown out. The people will come from all over the world, from east and west, north and south, to take their places in the kingdom of God. And note this, some who seem least important now will be the greatest then, and some who are the greatest now will be least important then. At that same time, Pharisees said to him, Get away from here if you want to live. Herod Antipas wants to kill you. Jesus replied, Go and tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will accomplish my purpose. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next day I must proceed on my way. For it wouldn't do for a prophet of God to be killed except in Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers, how often have I wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now, look, your house is abandoned, and you will never see me again until you say, Blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. One Sabbath day, Jesus went to eat dinner in the home of the leader of the Pharisees, and the people were watching him closely. There was a man there whose arms and legs were swollen. Jesus asked the Pharisees and the experts in religious law, Is it permitted in the law to heal people on the Sabbath day or not? When they refused to answer, Jesus touched the sick man and healed him and sent him away. Then he turned to them and said, Which of you doesn't work on the Sabbath? If your son or your cow falls into a pit, don't you rush to get him out? Again, they could not answer. When Jesus noticed that all who came to dinner were trying to sit in the seats of honor near the head of the table, he gave them this advice. When you are invited to a wedding feast, don't sit in the seat of honor. What if someone who is more distinguished than you has also been invited? The host will come and say, Give this person your seat. Then you will be embarrassed, and you will have to take whatever seat is left at the foot of the table. Instead, take the lowest place at the foot of the table. Then, when the host sees you, he will come and say, Friend, we have a better place for you. Then you will be honored in front of all the other guests. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then he turned to his host. When you put on a luncheon or a banquet, he said, don't invite your friends, brothers, relatives, and rich neighbors, for they will invite you back, and that will be your only reward. Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Then, at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. Hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, What a blessing it would be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to tell the guest, Come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, Go quickly into the streets, the alleys of the town, and invite the poor people, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, There is still room for more. So his master said, Go into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come, so that the house will be full. For none of those I first invited will even get the smallest taste of my banquet. 
a large crowd was following jesus he turned around and said to them if you want to be my disciple you must by comparison hate everyone else your father and mother wife and children brothers and sisters yes even your own life otherwise you cannot be my disciple if you do not carry your own cross and follow me you cannot be my disciple but don't begin until you count the cost for who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it otherwise you might complete only the foundation before running out of money and then everyone would laugh at you they would say there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it or what king would go to war against another kingdom without first setting down with his counselors to discuss whether his army of ten thousand could defeat the twenty thousand soldiers marching against him and if he couldn't he would send a delegation to discuss terms of peace while the enemy was still far away so you cannot become my disciples without giving up everything you own salt is good for seasoning but if it loses its flavor how do you make it salty again flavorless salt is good neither for the soil nor the manure pile it is thrown away anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to jesus teach this made the pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people even eating with them so jesus told them this story if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost what will he do won't he leave the ninety-nine others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it and when he has found it he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders when he arrives he will call together his friends and neighbors saying rejoice with me because i have found my lost sheep in the same way there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to god than over ninety-nine others who are righteous and haven't strayed away or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it and when she finds it she will call her friends and neighbors and say rejoice with me because i have found my lost coin in the same way there is joy in the presence of god's angels when even one sinner repents to illustrate the point further jesus told them this story a man had two sons the younger son told the father i want my share of your estate now before you die so his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons a few days later this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land and there he wasted all his money in wild living about the time his money ran out a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve he persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him but no one gave him anything when he finally came to his senses he said to himself at home even the hired servants have food enough to spare and here i am dying of hunger i will go home to my father and say father i have sinned against both heaven and you and i am no longer worthy of being called your son please take me on as a hired servant so he returned home to his father and while he was still a long way off his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion he ran to his son embraced him and kissed him his son said to him father i have sinned against both heaven and you and i am no longer worthy of being called your son but his father said to his servant quick bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening we must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and now has returned to life he was lost but now he is found so the party began meanwhile the older son was in the fields working when he returned home he heard music and dancing in the house and he asked one of the servants what was going on your brother is back he was told and your father has killed the fattened calf we are celebrating because of his safe return the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in his father came out and begged him but he replied all these years i've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to 
and in all that time you've never given me even a young goat for a feast with my friends yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes you celebrate by killing the fattened calf his father said to him look dear son you have always stayed by me and everything i have is yours we had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life he was lost but now he is found Scripture reading from the New Living Translation by Leonetta. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see surprising followers. <laughs>